Hi everyone, my name is Holly and I'm the editor of International Airport Review and I'm joined here by Dr. Fetty Shabil, who is CEO and founder of Vport. Fetty, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Holly. I'm very happy to be here. Vport aims to design, build, certify and operate vertiports in different cities in the world and leverage the potential of advanced air mobility. Now, the industry has become very excited in recent months about advanced air mobility. But Fetty, what actually is it? Um, it's a good question, Oli. So basically, the uh, air mobility is not new. Let's take two steps back. Back to the 40s and 50s, uh, helicopters were flying in New York and LA. Uh, for example, in New York, it was New York Airways were flying from Manhattan to uh, GFK, LaGuardia. LA were basically from uh, Disneyland to the airport. So these operations were basically seized because of accidents and the public pressure. Um, the word advanced air mobility was first coined by the NASA 2020. And basically at that time, they were referring to their in-demand activities, aerial activities. So they decided to use that wording. So people were basically around that wording, advanced air mobility, and then everybody was using that, uh, that word. So why, why now? What's going on to make sure that People is exciting, as you mentioned, and the business is very, is very uh, well growing. Basically, three things happen. The first thing is the uh, uh, technology advancement in battery. Now batteries are uh, basically less heavier, uh, and then uh, the autonomy of these batteries are growing. The second thing happening is the electric uh, propulsion of these EV tolls machine, of these EV toll aircraft. Uh, it's a new technology coming in, and basically this EV toll could use right now the electrical supply to fly. The third reason is there is a lot of e aircraft right now are moving through certification. We're talking about by 2020, where almost 12 uh, aircraft type of EV tolls, EV toll is electrical, vertical takeoff and landing. Um, are we're under the certification of uh, of uh, FAA. Now, the other questions that driving basically the advanced air mobility is the business side of it. So the technology side is evolving, which is great, but is it business, uh, it's a, is it a basically a good business? Uh, to answer that question is basically, we have to understand that uh, the EV toll, so now they are less expensive to operate and then uh, less noisy, so there is less, which is very important for uh, social acceptability. We'll talk about this maybe later. But at the same time, all this new app that could link this EV tolls operation with the uh, other mode of transportation, making it easier for everybody to connect on real time. So it means basically a volume would be higher uh, and the EV toll could fly within the cities and intercities uh, to connect people from one place to the other. So this kind of two pressure or two movement uh, is going on at the same time. Technologic uh, advancement, batteries and the EV toll and electrical supply, uh, and at the same time, the business side uh, of it. We can, we can discuss details, Holly, but this is basically the two element right now going on, making sure that this advanced air mobility is very important for many people in our uh, aviation business. Sounds hugely exciting. And I guess with new types of aircraft coming in, there'll be um, new infrastructure needs. Um, so what, what are the infrastructure needs for the future to accommodate these kind of new aircraft and this new way of travel? In aviation business, Holly, we need an ecosystem around the aircraft. Think about the, our history. So there were aircraft manufactured going airports of this world. And then, and then after that, we, we create all the ecosystem, including air. But in advanced air mobility, we need almost four pillars. So the first one to build this ecosystem. The first one is the aircraft, as you mentioned. This is very important. The second, the second pillar is all the uh, air traffic management integration. So we need to think about how to integrate this high volume with the current existing legacy of air traffic management. This is extremely very important element, by the way, uh, Holly. The third one is all uh, this kind of uh, uh, what you call it charging facilities, 
uh, we need to charge these EV tolls when they are uh, when they are fly when they are basically on uh, uh, landing or uh, on, on flight. The, th the fourth element of this ecosystem is the infrastructure. Lucky enough, we have already kind of existing infrastructure right now. So all the helipad uh, is basically will be the first kind of uh, uh, infrastructures available ready to be used for uh, EV toll taking off, uh, take off and landing. Having having said that, we need some adjustment based on the regulation because there is some regulation that is going on right now uh, that makes sure, for example, all the lighting, the marking physical characteristics uh, that it has to be adapted and changed based on that. So we have a reference, which is the IKO and X14 volume two. This is kind of the regulation worldwide regulation followed by all the countries, number of IKO, of course. And then uh, we need some changes or updates uh, to make sure that this EV toll could land uh, and take off safely. So this is the first kind of group of infrastructure that's be required. Of course, because the volume is high, we don't find heli heli helipad uh, everywhere, so we need to build a new one based on the regulation that will be uh, that will be available for that. So this is the infrastructure side. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and what is what is a vertiport? And I understand there are a few different types. So if you could walk us through those, that would be fantastic. Actually, uh, there is one kind of uh, kind of vertiport that will be built, but the uses of this vertiport will change. So if you have one downtown, uh, many people think that we need to build vertical downtown to connect with other transportation modes. Think about uh, um, think about Victoria Station in London, for example. We have a train, we have the buses, and then we create another helipad uh, vertical and on, on the roof of of the of the. I can see it. I can I cannot picture it honestly because I don't see that we can do that there. But the idea is to have this kind of vertical where it's downtown. Other ports are away from the cities, you know, just just sometimes, for example, in in ports or uh, again in land away from the city. So, but the vertiport is the same. So basically, it will have the same characteristics that it has to be following to build this vertiport. And what are the benefits of advanced air mobility and urban air mobility, in your opinion? I think, as I mentioned, the business side of it. So it will create, uh, uh, it will add uh, options for people to move from one uh, from one side to the other. Less expensive again, safer, uh, and because it's affordable, more than uh, helicopters, it will be available for everybody. And we know this is one trillion business by 2045. So it's very huge, very big business that people will be uh, would be the ecosystem will be working for that. Uh, so the connectivity is one of the key elements and one of the key points added value of the advanced air mobility. The other thing is obviously um, the social social part of it. People will move uh, easily, uh, so basically means we'll connect easily between uh, between between people. So we can move, we can we can fly actually from where you live to your office or where you live to the other friends or whatever. It's it's. It's easier than taking a car. It's quicker. It's uh, safer, and it's more affordable for every for uh, for many people. I understand? There's the sustainability aspect as well. Exactly. Definitely, uh, this is a very important element. Everybody talks about sustainability, so it looks like obvious because there is no fuel for it. Uh, you could expect like the beginning of this uh, movement uh, by the first five ten years. There will some aircraft that will be hybrid, so basically electrical and fuel for obviously for the range, so to, to increase the range, but uh, it's sustainable because there is only electrical supply, it's electrical uh, uh, aircraft. So yes, uh, definitely it is. Of course, there is uh, the other element, which is the noise. Uh, people that don't like helicopter because it's noisy, but this one, actually you can see it uh, before you hear it. Um, which is uh, which is very important element of sustainability as well. So as I mentioned, there's been a lot of uh, excitement in this area and a lot of developments which International Airports Review has reported on. But who are the key players in this space at the moment? Okay, um, I think I need to mention something is important because now the business is in new. 
So basically, only everybody trying to get in or to get involved, uh, which is which is great, which is which is good for the business itself, or at least for the industry, because we need a lot of thinking, we need a lot of discussions, uh, and that is is important to, for the first step of this uh, business. So for the EVTOL machine, uh, EVTOL aircraft, uh, the players are that they are really flying today are not that much. So um, I think about helium, volocopter, uh, Arker, Pekka technology. This is, you know, the list is uh, kind of uh, uh, not that that many EVTOLs manufacture are flying today, but there is a lot. Almost, uh, I think uh, uh, we're talking about three hundred company that they are doing actually uh, at least having ideas of EVTOLs uh, machines. On the EVTOL, so it's basically a crowded area right now. Uh, we don't have yet a kind of an operator, so like like equivalent of airline, yet. But which is which is okay because now it's basically the machine itself. We don't have an operator if we don't have a machine. So we need the machine first, and then the operator will come on board. Operator is the first, I think, in the market with the current operator of helicopters. Right now, these people, bl uh, blade, uh, uh, helijet, these people are I'm talking about the North Americans, basically key players uh, that they will be starting I, i'm saying obviously but maybe you know maybe new players coming in but this kind of the first operator i can see uh, evolving on the technology on the battery on the all the the, the battery technology we have a better technology which is the uh, ev tools machine manufacturer they have their own battery bae system are working on this and other players many actually even tesla is interested so, uh, but we need to consolidate at some point in terms of EVTOL machine manufacturers, in terms of the uh, batteries technology, because we need to standardize to make it easy and simpler for uh, for for Vitiport to have this uh, infrastructure to uh, for the for charging. The third, the fourth players, which is the the manufacturer, the infrastructure, sorry, which is uh, like uh, Vport. We don't have that much people, at least company, involved in, in that business. The reason is very simple, because a lot of money is going on right now for the EV tools machine. We're talking about 20 billion invested so far on the on the on the machine itself. Uh, but not that much really in the infrastructure. So we have us, uh, we have Vport, so us, we have uh, Skyport, we have Skyport, we have Urban air but think about the business it's it's a it's a, it's a huge it, each city we need many reports so definitely many other players will be involved on the infrastructure side so they just to summarize only now it's as any new uh, uh, industry people are talking which is again great um, people are working on the editor machine and full are, are on the certification process and flying uh, on the infrastructure side Still not that much, uh, but people will come in definitely for sure. And where in the world is this actually um, happening? Who, which countries or which regions are the early adopters who are leading the way? Where the countries are leading, which is when government they see uh, interest in this. Recently, we saw the uh, the announcement of the consortium in UK, which is great, which is excellent, because people are working together and they're uh, funded by the government, uh, by UK, uh, which is a strategic positioning of UK to be a leader in the world. Uh, the US are doing the same. They, there is a regulation right now in the US, which is like a group created and funded by, uh, by, this, uh, by the US. Uh, and the objective is, of course, to, make, to put people together and to think about. It. So this is where really we see where the government is involved but doesn't mean the private sector is not involved they're very aggressive and in, in that or that um so where do commercial airports come into this why should they care about urban air mobility and advanced air mobility excellent perfect this is an excellent question because many people they think that the airports will be kind of the infrastructure but it's not enough but this is important uh, when you see the business side we, we assess it uh, with our partner um geometrics we assessed 84 cities around the world of the advanced air mobility business for each city. And the one of the business um, case is the uh, airport shuttle. So basically from downtown to the airport. This is a very important business, but it's only one third of the revenue that you could collect. So basically uh, airports are 
obvious natural players because we need the port uh, in in at least in each airport. Let's make it this way. But it will be not enough. We need to cover cargo needs. We need as well to think about the uh, regional air mobility. Uh, it's a, so uh, the airport positioning in the advanced air mobility is required, is needed. I think we will see all of them that will be having uh, Vertiport uh, in, in their premises. Now, if the airport operators will be operating Vertiport, I don't think that will be, uh, that will be even the airlines, maybe they will not be happy or basically the airport, they will, they will, you know, they will, uh, they will have it like a, a commercial business that will, uh, Let's say they will lease it, or uh, uh, the the very simple example is uh, Sao Paulo Airport. Sao Paulo is one of the biggest cities that the advanced air mobility will be flying very very soon. Uh, the helicopter business today is fifteen billion. So think about the advanced mobi advanced air mobility itself in the city of Sao Paulo, and the airport of Sao Paulo, the biggest, the largest one in South America, just leased a space for Vertiport. So which is which is they are not doing this. Uh, V-Port actually will do that, but the, the idea here is very simple. The airport will be, I think, will be leasing the space for Vertiport operate for a Vertiport operator like us to uh, to do the business because it's different business, it's different dynamic, it's a networking more than uh, one Vertiport. Uh, so that's why I think the airport will be involved. Yes, but on the commercial side, so they will lease the land and the Vertiport uh, operators will take it over. So um, to touch on something you, you mentioned, um, do you think UAM will compete with traditional airports? You mentioned airlines might be a bit touchy on that subject. The airlines, because they don't want to, to pay uh, the regulated charges for airports to do other business than the airport itself, uh, what they pay for. But the airlines are players as well. So uh, think about, for example, a, a ticket where you can have a ticket from Dubai, London, uh, and then you have another an, another part of that ticket already paid in your ticket, which is an EV toll machine from Heathrow to downtown, for example, uh, Paddington Station. So instead of taking a train, you have a, a different other ways to do it, quicker, maybe safer, whatever. Um, uh, so this the airlines will have to think of it, right? They will be in both of this. The airlines will be operator of EV toll. We see this in the US, American Airlines, is buying some EV tolls machine as well, uh, as we speak. So yes, there will be uh, the airlines. I think they will be, they will be interested. Now, if the business will sustain, uh, you have EV toll machine and you have a uh, the legacy type of aircraft. If that sustain in terms of business side, I'm not sure. It's two different aircraft, two different uh, process, two different way of maintaining, two different business models actually. So I think, I think, I believe that uh, we will have airline doing that thinking and then there would other operators, they will work with the airlines definitely together to create a kind of uh, synergy, business synergy between both parties. But I believe that uh, EV tolls or advanced air mobility operators, there will be a specific dedicated operator for that. I don't believe as well that the operator will be manufacturing today. I don't think today, for example, Volocopter, even if Volocopter today would like to operate or other EV toll machine, actually, they will be doing the operation as well. I think they will start maybe doing operation at the beginning, but at some point, everyone will go to his own business because of liability, because of insurance, because of legal staff and how to deal with this. So the operator will be operators. The EV toll man ma machine manufacturer, they will, they will, they will do that very well. Vitsi port operators like us will do that, and that's all. Thank so you so much. See <laughs> Thank you for your insight on that. Um, so, I mean, I guess everyone wants to know when we will actually be seeing air taxis flying around our cities. When will be Paris the first said, time? Paris said we'll, we will see one next uh, 2024, 2024 for the, for the Olympics. Other, other cities that will fly you can see uh, EV toll flying very soon, but there is an there is another challenge or the challenge right now with the certification. You cannot fly for commercial if you are not certified. I cannot receive EV tolls in my Vertiport if I'm not certified as well. So we need to certify, and the challenge we have right now, the airworthiness certification for the EV toll machine is not available yet. 
So the FAA, AESA, you know, all these players, Nats are interested right now are doing this regulation, building this regulation as we speak on the airworthiness side for the machine and on the uh, victory port side for the infrastructure. Of course, when you when you when you when you think about the EV tolls, we have to certify the machine, we have to certify the manufacturing as well. So it's a little bit more complicated on that on that regard, on that side. As I mentioned, certification for the infrastructure is easier. Easier because we have a we have already a background, we have a kind of element. We have to add all the airspace integration, we have to add other elements in terms of safety, battery charging, for example. But still, it's uh, at least it will be quicker in terms of certification. So we will see uh, EV tolls flying. You can go to the US and uh, Vermont, see better technology flying. It's uh, really, we, we can see that. We saw them on the TV actually uh, many times. But in terms of uh, commercial, when it starts to be commercialized, talk about people flying, there's another story. Uh, it sounds very exciting, but uh, what, what does the future actually look like? What is left to do in terms of legislation, technological, regulatory changes? What's left? Uh, a lot. <laughs> we, this, is the, this, is, yeah, this is the starting point right now. Again, as you mentioned, people are exciting, which is great. Government are, are listening right now, which is good. I think uh, it will be required. Uh, so we need a lot of funding. A lot of money has to flow through uh, to the to the industry to make sure that we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can have EV tolls machine flying very soon. A lot of uh, uh, we need to we, this machine has to fly as much as possible because you need to be certified. You have to fly many hours. You have to test. You have to check all the all the positioning, all the all the conditions, all the weather that you have to think of. So this is very important. So that's why uh, we have to dedicate corridors for this EV tolls to fly. We have to have uh, uh, people like us doing the infrastructure, working with with the EV toll machine to test to do the all the uh, operation uh, around that. We have to integrate all the players of the ecosystem, positioning themselves, you know, together and uh, uh, trying to do this together. Because though, today is basically silo, only like. The EV toll machine are working, the uh, us infrastructure working, the um, batteries are working, you know, different, but everybody's working for him for, by, you know, to be ready as quickly as, as soon as possible. So there is some integration has to, has to happen, but that is really required by having, um, uh, I think it will take a couple of years to go through that integration uh, process. Great, thank you so much, Betty. I mean, there's hugely exciting space and I can't wait to see what, what's happening um, and especially with Vports, very excited to see what's, what's in store um, for that. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Oli. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.